Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. And today, welcome to a Chelsea news video. And more specifically today, I'm going to be talking about Chelsea players and updates from the club, headlines, speculation, rumours, etc. All that sort of fun. But before we get into today's video, please could I request that you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notifications icon. Now, as per usual, I'd like to say only subscribe if you're a fan of the channel and you enjoy the content, because otherwise it's a pointless exercise and I don't want just like dead subscribers. So if you enjoy it, please do subscribe and you might as well like the video if you're enjoying the content. Righty ho then, starting off with Ethan Ampadu. Yes, it looks like Ethan is set to go out on loan rather than remaining with the Chelsea squad this season. This was confirmed by Frank Lampard himself in his recent press conference. Now it was interesting because he says, yes, we've sent Ampadu back. He's not training with us because it looks like he's gonna be going on loan. He also goes on and says how he was looking forward to working with him this season. So that kind of implies in a way it was not necessarily Frank's initial decision but he does understand how it's a good move for the youngster because he can be starting for another team hopefully a Premier League team week in week out getting that valuable experience Frank says we've already got a lot of quality midfielders now for me that's significant that is a confirmation that Frank Lampard sees Ethan Ampadu as a midfielder so it's kind of put rest or certainly found his playing position's final resting place, if that's a sentence. This is great news for me because I personally think central midfield is certainly defensive midfield is Ethan Ampadu's best position and if you haven't seen my video on Ethan Ampadu, I suggest you go and watch it. I talk about his story coming to Chelsea, how quick his career trajectory has been um, and where he can play positionally for Chelsea. I actually talk about how I personally think Ethan Ampadu can become a world-class player and I, you know, lay it down basically. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. So ultimately, Ethan Ampadu going out on loan, hopefully to a Premier League club, getting valuable minutes every single week and being a Chelsea loanee, he can't play against us. So we don't have an absolutely deadly baller defensive midfield to worry about whenever we play whatever team he's being loaned to. So that's Ethan Ampadu dealt with and the first part of my news video. Moving on to Chelsea Academy product new contracts. Right, so starting with two positives being Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Mason Mount committing their long-term futures to Chelsea Football Club. Obviously two incredibly talented midfielders. I know Ruben signed a little while ago, but I'm talking about it now. He, um, for me, is maybe Chelsea's most talented attacking midfielder, or almost certainly a huge player for Chelsea. He can be the talisman, absolute beast. I know he's coming back from injury, but it's really great news him signing. Whether Frank had a big thing to do with that or not, I reckon Ruben would have re-signed regardless. Certainly Mason Mount re-signing for Chelsea probably is huge or a huge contributing factor is Frank Lampard. Um, Frank spoke about this. He was delighted to have Mason re-sign and you know, he's gonna keep him around. He's absolutely not gonna send Mason Mount on loan. And he even deliberately spoke about how Mason's had two successful loans away from Chelsea, which he has in Holland and obviously with Frank at Derby. So great news for both of them committing their long-term futures at the club and both will certainly be around the first team, well, the first 11 in my opinion. Which brings me to the Callum Hudson-Odoi issue. Now, for me, this is... It's just uncertainty, really, because he hasn't re-signed for Chelsea. He hasn't committed his long-term future to the club just yet. But Bayern Munich are still really, really interested in him. And understandably, they're looking for a wide player. And he's an amazing young talent. You know, England international, 18, already a lot of experience. Experience winning stuff at youth level. So Chelsea fans are getting nervous. And you know what? Marina Grenisky's statement... Uh, when she talked about how Mason signed a five-year deal, she was sort of talking about and romanticising how important it is that this Academy product committed himself because something da 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 da. It's kind of like she came out with what sounded like a sly dig at Callum Hudson-Odoi. The truth is, for my money, now 
it's it's never been a better time than now to commit yourself to Chelsea as an academy product or youngster. Not just because of the transfer ban, but because of Frank Lampard and Jody Morris. I mean, those guys alone should be, you know, the deciding factor. Frank Lampard's a club legend, he wants young English talent to come through, and he said that he's actually worked a little bit with the uh, academy team with Jody Morris. Jody Morris is the number two. He coached all this lot. It's so obvious how this is the best time for the Chelsea lads to come in and commit to them, you know, commit to the club, commit to the new system, the new regime. I mean, it's not just that, it's Petr Cech being the technical advisor, it's other people they're bringing back to the club. They're all talking about the youth. This is no longer like a hollow threat with one person in the club saying or, you know, an insinuation being made. It's a club structure being built that sort of um, incubates the youth and brings them to the first team. You know, it, it makes a lot of sense. So if you were a Chelsea Academy product, you'd be buzzing. And by all accounts, Tammy Abraham, Mason Mount, Loftus-Cheek, everyone, they are all buzzing how, on the fact how this is happening at Chelsea at the moment. So what is the deal with Callum hudson Adoy at the moment? I mean, I've done videos about how, I, I talk about how happy he is to be at Chelsea, how he looks so happy when he trains, when he scores, and he's got a good professional application and training and on the pitch. But what you know, what's going on with this contract situation? It gets a lot of people thinking. People get, you know, annoyed at the prospect how he hasn't signed yet, but no one really knows what the situation is. Perhaps he's just a really smart kid and he's waiting to get the best structured deal for him. Who knows? I, mean, I don't want to say he's greedy, maybe he's just being safe, but after, you know, becoming a first team under Sari, even under the transfer ban, knowing that's coming, that for me would have been enough assurances for Callum to re-sign, let alone Frank Lampard, Jody Morris, Petr Cech all coming into the club and his mates around him, Mason Mount, Ruben, they're all signing new contracts and by all accounts, Reese James will renew his contract and re-sign, so you know, you're a really promising squad, all your mates are signing around you, he's up and coming, it's a club legend coach. Unless he had his heart set in Germany, which I'm not sure he would, but it's a weird one to to speculate, you know, like, why, why, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? This is the best time than ever. But by all accounts, the general consensus on Callum Hudson-Odoi is there will be an agreement reached and he will sign. But it just looking at all his, you know, peers and teammates, the young lads who just made an agreement and signed, it's frustrating for Chelsea fans because he will be held in a high regard by the coach, he will be a first teamer and you know he's still only 18, you don't really want a teenager holding your club to ransom but by all accounts he will sign and when he does he won't cause any problems, it looks like he's got a really good application and professional demeanour when training and playing, it's just contracts are stinky business man and you know family, agents and stuff Oh, it's messy. But anyway, let's hope he signs and let's move on. Christian Pulisic, so the Captain America himself, he's arrived early uh, in Japan to join preseason with Chelsea. Now, he cut his holiday short after playing in the Gold Cup, an international tournament, where, by the way, he won young player of the tournament uh, to join up with the squad and meet Frank Lampard and impress, essentially. Now Pulisic has been in fine form the last few months, at the end of his domestic campaign with Dortmund he was in searing hot form and he's been playing really really well for USA, hence winning said award. So hopefully this fiery form will still be intact and he can impress Frank Lampard to absolutely solidify a starting place. I know he's a big signing, lots of money, but still Frank's going to be looking at everyone, so you'd fancy Pulisic really trying to impress. Frank actually recently said on his latest press conference he likes his team, his players, to be really energetic with and without the ball and be quick. That's basically Christian Pulisic personified. So for me, I feel like he's gonna have no problem impressing Frank Lampard, and I think Frank's gonna play him. So, happily ever after, uh, hopefully. So you'd assume, uh, certainly I'd assume, he'd be one of the first names on the team sheet next season in terms of style of player, professional attitude, Pulisic's got it all, and good form. I know Frank and Jody wanna play their own in the youth and stuff, but he's a big money signing Pulisic, and let's be honest, 
He's an excellent player. Uh, you know, people w whine about his like lack of goals over the last few years, but if you look at his recent form and his talent, his ability, how much experience he's got for his age, he's an absolute baller and he's playing for Chelsea next season. Quick word on N'Golo Kante, he's with the boys at pre-season. Um, he was training by himself for a while by all accounts because they're... <laughs> Frank Lampard loves N'Golo Kante, right? Now I can tell this already, the way he talked about it in his first press conference, um, he waxed lyrical about N'Golo Kante, he's done it before as a um, sports media pundit, we know Frank Lampard loves N'Golo Kante and is incredibly excited to be working with him. And on that, Lampard and his coaching staff are very aware that uh, Kante endured a little bit of injury at the end of last season and they're being very, very careful to nurse him back into optimal health uh, to play with the other guys in the team. Um, and bowl accounts, from what he said, he's going to be playing in Japan and some other preseason, and he'll be ready, fighting fit by the time the season starts. So... Go on and go low. Mateo Kovacic sat beside Frank Lampard in his press conference and made some, well, he made all the right noises in terms of talking about how they're applying themselves in training, they're working hard, it's hard, but they're enjoying it. It's uh, such an amazing thing to be working under a club legend like Frank Lampard, which, you know, caused a little smile from the gaffer. He knows what he's doing. But um, yeah, I think Frank Lampard really likes Kovacic. I've spoken about Kovacic at length. I've done a video on him. Check it out. He offers something in this Chelsea team that no other Chelsea player can give now Hazard's gone in terms of ball progression and how he carries the ball as a dribbler. Same build as Hazard, the way he moves with the ball. So I, fe I feel like Frank will really fancy Kovacic, um, which makes me feel like people like Bakayoko and Drinkwater. I just can't see it, man. And you know what? Bakayoko was an expensive signing and there is a player in there somewhere. There just is, despite what you nay say say i mean i don't want him in the team right now but there is a player in back of yoko frank might see that you might fancy it but you know what if psg's loan interest is legitimate we should just absolutely send him on loan to psg for the season and think about him later danny Drinkwater is a weird one i mean i don't think he's good enough either but don't really know what to say about that we'll see what frank thinks but kovacic absolutely starting midfielder in to rotate with those other you know household names all right football fans i'll leave it there for my chelsea news today i hope you've enjoyed me giving you updates on the players you know what let me know if this kind of video is something that you've enjoyed me talking about the headlines fitness chelsea players you know if this was in the season there'd be more stuff for me to talk about rather than what the players are doing in pre-season let me know what you think do you agree with what i said about the players do you like this type of video please like the video uh, subscribe if you are new i'm obviously elated with how well the channel has been doing it's been blowing up um, for me anyway how i feel it's been progressing it's been explosive high octane youtube progression that's like a football nerd youtuber nerd thing to say anyway if you want to support the channel you can you can become a patron if i can learn to talk and donate one dollar a month to my patreon uh, you'll get exclusive stuff and i'm finding additional incentives it's just one dollar a month it means a lot i'll put the link down in the description and because my english is leaving me i think it's time to end this video guys so enjoy the football and i'll see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck i'ma get it how i'm living i'ma walk the walk outline my lines i rap through thought body bag the verse outline the chuck in my life seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle, yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble, I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby.